imagine being born in 1912 and dreaming of having your first art gallery event in 2006. Imagine being born in 1906 and dreaming of having a ride on a Harley Davidson in 2007. Imagine being born in 1921 and dreaming of having your first novel published in 2009. My name is Lori Widmark, although I must say they put Widmark, which is very appropriate since we're in the Audubon Society, <laughs> but it's Widmark. <laughs> That's all right. I'm the founder and volunteer CEO of Ageless Streamer, a nonprofit organization founded in January 2006. I'm also a full time real estate broker and own Three Crowns Real Estate in Dover, New Hampshire, along with my husband, who's my greatest support. Thank you. I have brought with me three guests Natalia Anderson, my right and left arm. Um, Ruth Keen and Jerry Langler, who you will hear from a little later. We'll also have a slight, um, a short uh, slideshow presentation. I'll give you a little history on Age of the Streamer, and then hopefully we'll have some time for answers and questions. First, a little history. When I was in my 20s, my father called me a dreamer. And it wasn't a compliment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I was in my 40s, the women's group that I still belong to called me a dreamer. And they just kept laughing along with me. Now that I'm approaching my 60s, the board of directors for Ageless Dreamer it continues to encourage me to dream out loud with them. So I'm very grateful for that opportunity. Where did the idea for Ageless Dreamer come from? Okay, almost 10 years ago, when I was approaching my 50th birthday, I went to the mailbox. And lo and behold, I received my first invitation to AARP. I looked at that envelope, didn't open it, circular filed it, but it made me keenly aware of the fact that I was about to cross some threshold to a place that I had never been. So over the next few months, I started paying closer attention. Like when I walk the sidewalks, I go, where are they? Where is our oldest generation? And I noticed when I was driving my car, and uh, I drive by senior, public senior housing, or nursing homes, or assisted living, or retirement, and I didn't even turn my head to look. And it's like, oh, where are they? So my husband, such a kind, gentle soul, who put up with me about this, uh, we started visiting the assisted living, nursing homes, any place that you know we could go in, and we'd introduce ourselves to whoever was sitting in the hallways. And then we got curious about the doors. You know how you have rooms with doors on them? And we decided that we would knock on a door. And somebody would get up and we'd come to the door and we'd introduce ourselves. And we'd go in and we'd sit down and we'd talk to them for a little while. And we'd do this for months, different people, different places. And we learned something very important. We learned that it didn't matter if you were living in public senior housing or the most exclusive retirement facility and everything else in the middle, if nobody knocked on that door and asked you, do you have a dream? happened. There was no sharing, no sharing. So a few months after that, I walked, went to the mailbox again. And yes, I'd already had my 50th birthday by then. But because AARP doesn't give up easily, I got my second invitation. I did the same thing. I looked at it, but this time when I went to throw it into the recycle bin, I declared out loud, I am not an AAR peer. I am an ageless dreamer. And that is where the name came from. So I put together a business plan. 
thinking that I was going to build a socially responsible business. Well, that was about nine years ago. And after showing it to a couple of people, some business people, consultants, they finally said, so how are you going to make the money? This isn't going to work. So I tucked it back into file boxes, stuck it in storage, and let it go. And then in the fall of 2005, my husband and I were, we have a motorhome, and um, we were taking a vacation to go see my sister, and we were on the Natchez Trace. Are any of you familiar with the Natchez Trace? It's long, like, I don't know, is it 423 miles or something, of beautiful woods, and it's a nature trail. As we entered it, I said to my husband, I said, so why is it they don't get it? You know, like, why don't they get it? People have talked to them about it, they don't get it. He said to me, get it on one page. So for the next 423 miles, he's driving, I'm typing on my laptop, and I didn't see a thing, and we have to go back. But I did have a page that then produced some res results. And so that January 2006, January 10th actually, we had a first board meeting, and Angel Streamer uh, became its first, you know, first nonprofit for Angel Streamer. Our first board member who believed in the project was, at the time, 81-year-old Greg Hall Jr., who was an attorney in Rochester who continued to practice law up until six months ago. So he was the first one on board, and the rest is history. And we are now four years, eight months in. Who's counting? <laughs> so that's how that all came about in the future, we'll behold and see. You have seen uh, t-shirts, perhaps, maybe not, but we have a quote that we use, and it's on the back of the women's t-shirts. It's, when I dream, I'm ageless. And that's a quote by Elizabeth Coatesworth, author Elizabeth Coatesworth. And four years ago, we contacted her daughter, who lives in Maine and is 90 years old and asked her for written permission for us to use that quote. And she said we could use it to forward our good work. So we're very, it's a perfect quote if you think about it. It's a great quote. On the back of the men's t-shirts, we have an attitude worth sharing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our quote. <laughs> and we think it's very apropos. So I think what I would like to do right now is bring up Ruth Keen. But before I do that, I'd like to just say, ageless dreamer is of the mindset that just because someone is part of the oldest generation, it doesn't mean they still don't dream. And so in essence, we've learned over the past two years particularly, that we act as a catalyst for caregivers and adult children who work closest with the elders to remember to ask them. Do you have that dream? Listen closely. And some long-held, heartfelt dream might no longer be constipated. And that's an oxymoron, I'm sure. You know, ageless dream constipating. <laughs> ageless dreamer needs to get louder than wheelchairs, walkers, hearing aids, lifelines, medical prescriptions, doctor's appointments, what'd you have for breakfast, and did you have your bowel movement today? <laughs> so we are all about intergenerational conversation and getting things moving again. Mm -hmm.